Welcome back to another episode of Smalls That Sell, where we take the hot trending items that are in the big box stores and we break this stuff down so you can put your twist to it and build this stuff at home for yourself or to sell. And for those of you that are new to the channel, the whole point of this is for you to be able to think divergently, break things down in your head, and to realize just how easy that it would be for you to make. I have several builds to break down and go over with you guys today, so let's hop into it. All right, so this first one, I'm gonna consider it a medium size item, even though it would be just as simple to make as anything else that I've covered. And that is gonna be the $240 coat rack from the old PB. And there's one thing that I noticed while doing the research for this video is that coat racks are becoming very popular again. I actually found several different styles, but this is the one that I chose to break down because you could make this a couple of different ways and both of them are easy. So before you freak out about the legs on this, I'll explain to you a really easy way to get this look. So the base of this project is only made out of one board and four legs. This thing is 60 inches tall and at the base where the legs span, that's 20 inches wide. So let's talk about the one board in the middle. So since the total height is 60 inches and with the angles of the legs, which we'll go over in a minute, is taken into consideration, the actual board itself is only four foot long. And to me, it looks like that it's an actual full thickness two by two. But really it just depends on the look that you're going for. You can use a little thicker material or thinner. But the main thing about this build is that it needs to be stable. And all of that is going to come from the legs. So at this point, we're gonna say that our base is a four foot two by two. So now let's talk about those rounded legs. Based on the dimension and the span of the legs, they look to be about 16 inches long. Yes, if you have access to a lathe, you can knock these things out in no time. But if you don't, you can actually pick up a set of four rounded legs that look almost identical to this for only 20 bucks. Or if you do not want to go with the rounded legs at all, use the exact same stock that you use for your center base and make your legs out of that. It'd just be more of the square rustic look. Whereas with these rounded legs, it's the modern rustic look. And if it were me, I would actually make both. Like we've talked about before, everyone is different. Everyone's houses are decorated differently. So give people options. And, and again, I cannot say this enough. It is not about what you like. It's about what the customer likes. So I'm gonna say that you have chosen to use the round legs like this and you've just purchased them off of Amazon. So whenever you get these legs in, they're gonna be 16 inches long. And it's gonna come with some different hardware, but we're not gonna be needing that because we're gonna be needing a sharper angle than what the kit supplies. So when the legs come in, probably gonna have a little bolt sticking out of the ends. Those are just double thread at boats, just take some pliers, unscrew those. But hang on to them because you may need them for another project. And then you'll need to put a 50 degree angle on the ends of each one of these. Now, how did I come up with 50 degrees? Well, just kind of playing around actually. I just took the span of the base that I wanted, which I wanted right around 22 inches. I took two pieces of scrap, angled them in on a flat surface until they were 22 inches apart. Then just took another piece of scrap that is two inches wide, the same width as our center board, placed it in the center, and just marked one of my edges. Took it to the miter saw, found that edge, and it was 50 degrees. Yes, there are several different tools that you could use to find this, but this only took me about a minute, so work smarter, not harder. So now that we know that our angle is right around 50 degrees, it's gonna look something like this. So to find the angle, I just use scrap wood and square stock, so if you want to actually make square legs, you just do the same thing. So now that we know that we need a 50 degree angle on each one of these legs, the next step is going to be to cut those. Most people are gonna do this with a miter saw, but like anything else, there are several different ways that you can do it. But regardless of how you do it, you have to take into consideration that this is a tapered leg. So whenever you lay this against your fence to make a cut, the back is going to be smaller. So it will actually shift the piece of wood out of square and changing your angle. So to keep that from happening, that's all that you have to do is measure the width of the thickest part, which is the end that we're gonna be cutting, and then shim out the back the same distance away from the fence that is the same as the front of your leg. So now with the leg square against your fence, you're ready to cut your angle. So now with the angles cut on all of our legs, how are we going to attach these to our two by two? Again, there's several different ways that you can do this, but I'll tell you how they did it. So if you look close at where the legs attach to the two by two, it almost looks like that it's a little thicker at the bottom, like it's designed into the base. Well, it's not. So all that they've done is taken a quarter of an inch piece of plywood that is the same width as the board, two inches, taken the 50 degree angle and attached it just like this. By doing it this way, it keeps you from having to install any of your screws or nails at an angle. You can do it all from the back. So I would throw on some wood glue, pre-drill and put two screws in this. That's gonna make for a really solid leg. And this piece of plywood is going to add extra surface for glue. So then once you have that installed, I would just coat this with glue, measure up maybe four inches from the bottom of your center board, and then attach this to your center board using that wood glue and some brad nails. Once that wood glue dries, 
you're set. And then you would just repeat this for the other three legs. So once your legs are on, there's only one thing left to do, and that's going to be to add the hardware. I actually found a six pack of these on Amazon for less than 10 bucks. And once you get one of these on each side of the top, it's gonna look pretty similar. And that's how simple that it would be to make one of these. Now for me, whenever I would get these legs in, I would sand that finish off, maybe darken it up a little bit and make it look a little more rustic, but to each their own. Put your own style and twist to it. And as far as selling these things, 240 bucks is a little steep. You may be able to get that if you're using reclaimed wood and you're actually turning these legs down. If it were me and I was using new lumber, I'd probably shoot for closer to the $150 range. But again, that's just in my area. Every area is different. We've talked about this before. Things that would sell in my area for $150, you may be able to get $200 out of. And the only way that you can find out is to test the market. This next one I've actually found on tons of different sites from your fancy furniture places to the actual big box stores. So before I show it to you, the cheapest place, and that was a big box store, we're selling this for $18 a piece and I saw them all the way up to 30. Check this out. So they are calling this a vintage farmhouse bracket. I'm calling this a two by four that was made out of a branch that was only about three inches wide. I honestly believe that they are taking the two by fours that they have called did not make the cut. And they are making these and selling a little piece of that two by four for 18 to $30. But anyway, since they were on several different sites, that means that people are buying these and they are popular. You know what to do with this. The board that goes against the wall is 10 inches long. The board that acts as the bracket is eight inches long. So all they've done is cut 45 degree angles on those two boards put a couple of screws in from the top because it's actually going to have a board on top of it and then for the support bracket in the middle i'm going to say that it's about six inches long with a 45 degree angle on each side and to make this thing look rustic or look farmhouse they have taken a framing nailer and toenailed in some nails to hold that into place you can tell that it's been put in by a nailer but the nails are actually inset into the wood and then that's all that they have done is roughed it up some more so the edges where the bark was showing they really didn't have to do anything because that's on half the two by fours you find anymore but then they've taken hatchets and made some marks you can actually see where they've used a screw just to lay onto the board hammer that in and then put the screw marks in why a screw if they're wanting this to look rustic i would have used a square nail instead of an actual screw but to each their own. And then once all that was crudely put together, you can see the big gaps, you can see all of that. And it really doesn't matter because that's the theme, that's the look for this. But once that was together, they just slapped some paint on this. And all of this paint has been sprayed on. Why they picked some of these colors like this green one, I have no clue. But they are obviously selling these things. So all together to build one of these, there's only 24 inches of two by four. So that means out of an eight foot stick, you can make four of these. So less than a buck a piece, they're selling these things for 18 to $30. I'm gonna let you decide on what to price these at because I have no clue. I'd have to test the market and see what people are willing to pay. But the cool thing about this is if someone is going to buy one, you know that they're at least gonna buy two. And if they're planning on using this for a shelf, make sure that you take that scrap piece of two by eight that you have laying over in the corner because it's all roached out and the edges are gone and paint it up to match your brackets. And this next one caught my eye because it was relatively expensive and it was from Target. Or when you're trying to sell something like this for a high price, We'll call it Target, okay? Sounds a little more fancy. And obviously fancy name places get higher prices. So regardless of what you wanna call the store, this is a pretty cool item. And you can build this out of fence pickets or pallet wood. So they're calling this a three pocket hanging file holder. So when you first look at this build, yes, it may look a little complicated, but it's not. If you really take a close look, there's really only three main elements to this. You have your frame that goes around the outside, you have your X brace that's in the center, and then you have your three fold down pockets. So this file holder is 15 inches wide by 33 inches long. So what I would do is start with the frame of this, the backing. And to me, it looks like it's all two inch material. And in the description of this item, it says that the wood is a half of an inch thick. But again, perfect for pickets or pallets. So we'll just start by cutting whatever material that you're deciding to use down to two inch strips and then whatever length and width that you actually decide to build this. So let's say that you're gonna build it similar to this. So you need two outside boards that are 33 inches long with 45 degree angles on each side. And then a top and bottom board 15 inches long, again with 45s on each end. And then we'll just put this together like we would a picture frame. And if it were me, I'd put it together with some pocket hose screws in the back. Super fast, super easy. So once you have the exterior frame built, we'll move on to this X design in the center. If you look at the corners of this thing, it looks like that there would be all kinds of complicated angles and things like that. But let me show you a super easy way to mark all of those cuts without using any type of math or angle finders. We're gonna say that this is a rectangle for whatever size that you decided to build the outside frame. You would take two half inch strips, and theirs looks like that they're about 
an inch and a half wide, but go ahead and cut those a little long. And then what I would do while the ends are square, I would lay my first one across from angle to angle. And then from the inside, make my mark on both sides. Now that I have my two ends marked, head over to the miter saw and make those cuts. Now, if you've made this thing perfectly square, you can make those exact same cuts for your second board. If you're a little worried about it, just do the exact same thing for your second one. So once you have your outside angles cut, you could either put a half lap on both pieces in the center, or you can install your first full length piece, lay your second one on top to where it fits, and then draw a line on the top and the bottom. Then you can make those two cuts, and then everything would fit in flush, giving you that design. So now you have the entire back done. So now let's talk about the hanging folder shelves. I'm gonna estimate that if this is 15 by 33, that each one of these panels that they're using are probably about 10 by 15 inches wide. So these panels are a lot easier to make up than what they look. So it looks like that they've made it like a cabinet front where you have your four outside pieces and then you have your inset board in the back, but that's not the case. If you look really closely, not counting the X design in the center, but everything else is one panel. The only thing that they have done is darken the center to make it look like it's recessed. Let me show you what I mean. So I just made this out of some scrap fence picket ends that I had laying around. And it's a 15 by 33. And obviously I haven't done any distressing or anything like that, but if you take a close look at this, the width is two fence pickets wide. And for the ends, the 45s just meet in the center, giving you this. Okay, so there's your panel. Okay, and you see this dark line that's going around? That's where I would actually darken the center to give it the illusion of depth, which it's what they've done here. So again, I would just attach all of those parts using wood glue and brad nails. You can use dowels or just put some pocket hose screws in the back. But once your panels are made up and you want to put this X design into the center, this is how I would do it. I would not inset this design at all. Yes, you could route out those two channels and inset boards into that, or why not just cut some quarter of an inch strips and put them on top? It's not like this panel's inset into anything. So again, you do you. But if for me, I would just put these things on top and maybe even skirt the outsides of it with some really thin trim. So you'd actually be adding more dimension to this. Any way that you decide to do it, you, you get your three panels made. You just lay these out with the spacing that you would like onto your backing. On the base of each one of these panels, I'm sure that they've just used some really cheap square hinges on each side. And for the top to get that angle, so all that they've done is drilled holes in each end of the panel, folded that panel up, and wherever those holes fell, drilled a hole into the backing. And then took a couple of pieces of rope, ran it through there, tied knots on the end, and bam, you have a three pocket file holder. They're wanting $65 for this, and I'm positive that they have shipped this in from overseas. So for me, I would actually keep the price right around that and focus on the fact that it was handmade by you. And this next one, they are calling this a wooden desk organizer with a bunch of remotes in it. And they're wanting $30 for this thing. Remote caddies and things like that have been around for years. And now of all times, we have remotes for everything. So we need something like this. And the super cool thing about this one is you can build it for dirt cheap. This will make a great fence picket build because the dimensions on this are four and a half by five and a half by seven and a half inches long. Since most fence pickets are five and a half inches wide, Perfect, so let's break this down. The two end pieces are gonna be our most complicated part of this whole build, and it's not complicated. This is it. It's five and a half inches tall, and I cut it at four and a half inches wide. As far as these angles, I measured in an inch on each side and made a mark, and then for the bottom part of this angle, I measured up four inches, because based on this picture, that's kind of what I figured the sides were. So I had my four inch mark, and then my one inch in, then I just cut that angle and repeated for this side. Now I have a template. I can actually lay this on a picket all the way down the thing if I wanted to and cut several of these. So we'll need two of these end boards. And then for the sides, we'll need two boards that are four inches by six and a half inches long. And then the center divider, we'll need one more board that is five and a half inches by six and a half inches long. For me, I would assemble this with brad nails and wood glue, starting with the sides and then slide the center divider down into the middle and then throw in a couple more brad nails from each end. As far as the bottom, it's all they've used is a quarter of an inch piece of plywood and tack that from underneath. Now you could inset that bottom if you would like, but I really don't think it's needed. Now these black decorative brackets that they have going around the sides, this is all they are. So you can go to any big box store, you can go to the lumber and framing section, and these corner brackets are less than a buck a piece. They have all different kinds, all different sizes, 
This one only has two holes on each side. It looks like this one has four on each side. They have those two. Spray paint those things black. And before you install those, go ahead and paint these things up any way that you would like. They've just whitewashed theirs, which looks pretty good, and threw the brackets on. If you had all of your parts and your boards were already painted, I'd say that you could put one of these together in less than five minutes, throw a $25 price tag on these babies, and let them roll. So while I was looking around the Tarje website, and for you non-fancy people, that is French for Target, while I was looking around the Target website, because I'm not fancy, I found this and I thought that it was super cool. So the measuring rulers for kids have been around for a long time. I guess whenever it was no longer acceptable just to, you know, mark it on the door frame like we always did. But what caught my eye about this one was it was folded in half. Usually you just see them like as a sticker or something like that just on the wall, but this was a nice piece of wood that folded up. So this wall ruler is seven and a half inches wide by six foot tall by three quarters of an inch thick. All right, so how about a one by eight? Right now at the big box stores, one by eights are selling for $10.60. Let's say that you wanted to build two of these. It would actually be cheaper if you just bought a one by eight by 12 and you can pick those up for a little under 16 bucks. So this is as simple as it looks. They just cut their boards down into three foot sections, put a couple of hinges on the back, place a removable wall hanger on the back of the two boards while they were folded up, and then you could unfold it and place your second wall hanger on as the child grows. And if you're wondering why the one foot so close to the bottom, that's because they want you to hang this six inches from the ground. If it were me, instead of hanging both of these boards together, I would just put the hinges on the back board and have it to where it could be stored away and then added to it later. I just know how kids are, and I know mine would be like, smashing their brother's head in this thing, you know, opening it up, whatever. That's just how I would do it. As far as the lettering goes, stencils. You can actually pick up these number stencils pretty much anywhere because these are the sizes that are intended for mailboxes. Easy to find. Now this would be a perfect project if you had a laser or a CNC. And I actually have an example in the Thunder Laser, so let's check that out. Hot off the press, and this is what I'm talking about. Now, if I was actually making this for a customer, the only other thing that I would do is personalize this thing. Anything personalized will sell, and especially if you put grandkids' names on this, or even the family name, where like the peach family tree is growing. Just little quirky stuff like that, people love it. Falls into one of those categories that people will spend money on. A guaranteed sale is when it comes to spending money on someone's kids or grandkids, especially whenever they are young. It's kind of like the baby book thing. You know, the firstborn, the baby book is like this thick and it has like the first time that they pass gas in there. And then the second child, it's like a little bit thinner. And then, you know, it's like first birthday, got this present. And then the third child, you know, here's their book. So all jokes aside, grandparents will buy this for their grandchildren and grandparents are probably the one with the money. I would leave the wood natural pine because almost every ruler I've ever seen in my life has been made out of pine. Plus, if you put any type of an actual finish on this, they won't be able to write on it unless it's with a permanent marker. So if you make these things up, they look nice. I don't think that you have any issues at all getting 50 bucks a piece for these. And this next one I personally thought was super cool because it's actually made out of reclaimed wood. And it's this $90 candle holder. This thing is 23 inches long, holds six of those candles that you can pick up for next to nothing. But honestly, I shouldn't even be showing you guys this thing because for 90 bucks, obviously they are the only place on earth that has access to material that looks anything close to this. I mean, look at that old bolt hole in the old. And no, I did not purchase this from them. I have a pile of this stuff laying around. It's reclaimed wood. When you are out and about, just look at old lumber that has potential. I mean, look at this thing. It's almost identical, except theirs has a little dent close to that hole. Now it's identical and I can get 90 bucks for this. I bet if I hit it again, I could probably get 100 bucks for it. All jokes aside, you can use any rustic piece of lumber that you have, old four by fours, anything like that with this natural worn patina. Space out and drill your holes for your candles and you have a candle holder. Again, I just wanted to show you this just so you keep your eyes open and keep your mind open whenever you're out looking at different things. You do not have to use new material to get awesome results. And actually, like I've told you before, reclaimed material will actually sell better because there's always a story that goes along with it. So a huge shout out to the Patreon community for making this channel happen. Also check out the Discord channel where our brag board is at. You can submit your own brags there, ask questions to the community, or just hang out with like-minded people.
I'll make sure to throw the links in the description for both of those. So until next time, guys, I want you to be breaking down items in your head. Everything that you see, you try to figure out how they built that, how you could replicate that, and put your own twist to it to make your own. You will surprise yourself at how easy that this will become once you start doing it. The biggest word of advice as your abilities grow to do this is do not tell your family that you can do this because then they're going to be sending you pictures of stuff that they want built. Okay, so I'm just kidding on that. Well, they're really going to send you stuff that they want built, but take care of your family, take care of yourself. And until next time, guys, you do you and go make something. See ya.